Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about land issues, and I'll probably touch on, we'll talk about Cotrex to start. Just kind of want to do that. Um, Cotrex is a pretty neat app. It's provided for by Colorado, the state of Colorado. I'm not sure if it comes out of tax money, OHV money, which I guess would all be the same, right? Funds raised somehow by the citizens of this state. And, you know, it's a pretty good app. I do have a little beef with it as far as we were already doing that as many different companies out there. When I was had the startup company Trail Taker, we were already doing that. In fact, even better because you could download the segments if you wanted Rampart Range Road. We actually connected all those together. You could download any of the ATV trails, Jeep trails, single track, hiking trails, and we had written a program that would take all of that because the Forest Service and BLM, what they do is, like Rampart Range Road, is five sections. So we wrote a program that recognized that was all one and took it and put it together. So you had one section to download. It was very handy. You can't do that with Cotrex. Um, I think the private sector was doing this already and was about ready to provide a lot better solution than Cotrex. Cotrex came after us, but we were already doing it. All Colorado had to do was probably reach out to a company. I don't even care if it was Trail Taker or who, but and say, hey, look, this is what we want done. Let's do it. And, you know, maybe you get $50,000 a year to maintain the GIS files, the maps on your site for our state because that's the downside with Cotrex is you go to New Mexico it stops at the line even if the trail goes across or the Jeep road you go to uh, Utah Wyoming Kansas whatever it might be everything stops at the state line because it's a state project we know states aren't good at having a business mindset the, what they should be doing if they're gonna take this on is say hey New Mexico we could do the same thing for you and it's going to cost x amount a year to manage your your um database it would be that easy and that would offset the cost of maintaining the colorado one if not have it for free go to utah do the same thing say hey you have all these great trails you really need an app like this, do a whole presentation, show the people that make the decisions what you've done in your state, and we can do this in your state for a fee. That would be awesome. Thus, we would have a totally free and maybe bringing money in and we could say, hey, the money that comes in from this mapping software is going to OHV use, hiking use, mountain bike use, you know, all these user groups evenly evenly because it is for all the user groups but do it evenly right so no one's getting cut out like you know we're bringing in after you hit all those states and they all signed up you know hey we're bringing three hundred thousand dollars to this program i'm just pulling numbers on my ass i don't know how much it costs to maintain but you know you get what i'm saying here's three hundred thousand dollars we're pulling in we're going to give you know x amount to this group x amount to this group x amount to this group you know identify these groups ahead of times and then split it up and here you go here's a sum of money that can go in the forms of grants you know write proposals what are you what, what do you need done do you need new trails what do you need and then we award that money and that money has to be awarded for something so maybe it's awarded for improving trailheads you know a lot of these trailheads i see no matter the user group they could use like some loads of gravel just make it nice flatten it out make it so it's not like mud and <laughs> dirt where you know it rains or heavy snow and then it's it's just rutted out it washes out put in a nice thick layer of gravel in the parking lot you know have it nice maybe have pit toilets whatever the money could go for a lot of things that, that's my point but states don't run things as businesses they just don't have that good business mindset hence why i think an app like that should have just been delegated to the private sector it really should have because in the private sector, we had the whole nation 
all the trails in the nation and we could we were expanding to cities and areas and counties whatever hiking trails and this trail and that trail we would have for the whole nation so you want to look up oh the trail goes across state line it would have mattered we would have had it and then the idea was to then add videos so where people can link their youtube videos or whatever media source link it and then hey you could see the trail uh, you could give ratings on the trail. You could give feedback. Hey, this trail's washed out, needs maintenance as of whatever day they posted it. You know, <laughs> you know, February 27th, 2024, this trail has trees across it. It needs work. And then that would also give feedback to the land managers too because then they could just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, okay, hey, ooh, yeah, let's, let's fix that. Oh, there's pictures of trees down. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Or user groups that maintain the trails a lot better than the land managers could go and address those issues. So that's just my thing with uh, Cotrux. I think it could have been private and it would have actually done better. And I think there was a lot of companies out there that were doing this and getting more involved in it. I think we just did it better. I just had a bad business partner. So it is what it is, right? Could have grown into something pretty good that was more unique than any others that I have seen so far. So talking about land issues, I want to jump into Penrose Commons OHV area. You know, it is my opinion, because I have been at these meetings before and, and whatnot, I'm going to relay a story to you. And I think I've done this before in the past, and I've done it in person to people, but it's like people don't listen. So you know, about 11 years ago, I want to say, I'm trying to think of when my daughter was born, hence, when did I go down there? It was probably like 10, 11 years ago. As part of Trail Taker, we went down to a meeting down in Royal Gorge to the BLM Royal Gorge field office. Uh, met with Linda Skinner, met with some other folks. Um, Colorado TPA was there. Uh, some guy with a dealership in Pueblo was there, you know, a bunch of people that like to be involved in the, not just OHV, whatever, the processes to have trails open. And at that time, there I can remember this guy there, older gentleman, he goes, well, you know, we almost got all the trails put in at Texas Creek, single track. But we need, you know, there's an area, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if he meant that they were flagged or what the deal was, but there was trails and we're just waiting approval. Where's this approval? Where's this single track? It's been how long? So I want to relay that to you all because people that are looking at Penrose Commons and say, oh, you know, they say they say it's going to be open next year. They're, they say it's going to be open by 2025, but 2026. Ten years later, you're going to be saying, saying the damn same thing or you've moved on with your life because they are not going to open single track there now prove me wrong and get it done but every time i've seen this as being part of rocky mountain adventure riders and in partaking in various meetings here and there it just doesn't get done or the the way the land managers think is just asinine half the time now i can remember another meeting that had to do with the terry all area out there by hartzell and how they were going to close down camping sites and how you're going to have designated camping, but they their whole thing was more and more people are coming out here to recreate. They're camping. They're riding ATVs. They're doing other things. They're hiking, what, what have you, equestrian. They're out here. It's growing because Denver's so close. Springs is so close in reality. You know, these places are growing. It's going to have more people come out to the countryside, mountainside, and use the area they're going to recreate with their families their friends out for the day out for the weekend but hey we're going to close all these camping sites so we're going to drive people to poach other areas that's what essentially that entails right because people are going to get out there and they're going to be like oh my spot that i've been camping in for 20 years is now closed oh i'm just going to go over here and f them you know i'm going to go to a different spot out of out of sight out of mind type thing so it just drives people in further. It drives people to go to other areas to do this. So it doesn't really help anything. And then they were saying, oh, we need to like change around some of the ATV trails and blah, blah, blah. And you know, you'll get a few more miles of trails. They always like that, but you're getting a few more miles of trails. Now I can remember a lady standing up. She stood up 
I wish I had this on camera still. It was part of Rocky Mountain Adventure Riders YouTube channel, which no longer exists. I wish I would have saved that because I didn't. I didn't know how to download stuff at that time. But I had recorded that whole meeting. This lady stands up and she goes, well, if there's going to be more people out here recreating, which you just told us there's going to be, that's the projected forecast for the area. More and more people as Denver grows, Colorado Springs grows, we're going to have more people out here. So why aren't we looking at putting in more trails? And the the uh, land manager, the this was the Forest Service, was like, oh well, uh, well, you know, you know, he was just like all over the place. He 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 tripped over his own feet because he couldn't comprehend that he just said there's going to be more people, and there was other people that were like raising their hands, standing up, and saying, you just said there's going to be more people, but yet you're closing trails, rerouting trails, whatever you want. Oh, but 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 you're going to get a few more miles of trails. Yeah, but there's going to be more people. So you're closing trails. You're going to give us a few more miles of trails, but that's not going to alleviate having more people. So we need more campsites. We need more trails. And they just couldn't answer that question. So back to Penrose. It ain't going to ever happen. I don't think it's going to ever happen. Everyone wants to play nice. I remember going on ADV Rider, being new to Colorado, and people talking about Roland's Pass. And then I did a bunch of research about that. And legally, there's supposed to be a route through Roland's Pass that is open. Now, there was a, a, a road, if you want to call it a road, called the Wagon, I think it was called like the Wagon Wheel Road, and then Roland's Pass. One of those have to be open between the two wilderness areas that it goes through. Well, they're both been closed. And people on ADV Rider were like, oh, well, we got to play nice. I said, you know, being the young gun, being the, the dude in his 30s, early 30s, I said, hey, why don't we just all go out there in mass and go ride it? Oh, well, you know, most people won't be able to ride the wagon road because it's not even a road. It's not even really a trail. It hasn't been used forever. I'm like, so what? So we all go out there in mass, show force. And they were like, no, we got to play nice. Okay. That was over, let's see, I moved here in 2007, probably became active in 2010 with the ADV stuff. Uh, you know, and now we're in 2024, 14 years later, and no more talk about it. I don't hear anything. So, Roland's Pass is closed. Still. And legally, one of those options to have the wilderness in there was written in the bill that you had to have a way through. It's still closed. <laughs> so you people that think somehow Penrose Commons is going to be open, you're fooling yourselves. You are fooling yourselves. It's not going to be open. At the best, at the best, we could hope that maybe they open one of the easier trails and say, hey, look, we gave you something. And then that's all that will ever be open. I guess that would be better than nothing, right? But I don't I don't think they're going to ever open any of the good trails that we like that are just, they're rocky. There's really no reason to do an environmental study, an archaeological study. That whole area pretty much has been done, right? If those roads had all that study done in ATV trails and rock crawling trail, then that means that stuff was all completed and there was nothing in the area. Why would also only there be something in one of those rocky canyons? They don't understand how rocky those canyons are. They're big boulders. And water, when it rains, that turns into like a river. You wouldn't want to be down in any of those canyons when it rains because you're going to be washed away. And you can see where the grass like folds over on the, like, I guess you would call it the banks, you know, where it's a little higher, and it folds over because the water came through and just pushed stuff. They pushed trees, they pushed rocks. There is nothing down there that is important to archaeological or environmental. But, you know, why not? We got to do the study because the law says, and these studies, oh, they got to cost thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Why? Because, oh, that's how much the studies cost, Mark. They, and you got to apply for a grant for, I don't understand why the whole process of applying for grants. It's great, right? The money's out there. If we can apply for a grant and get it for these studies, that's great. But you should have a backup. Backup is modern day, use social media 
to raise money, to raise awareness, raise money. You can raise funds. Okay, maybe we don't raise $50,000. Maybe we only raise $30,000, but at least it's $30,000 that's raised. I'm just saying. And then maybe we can figure out how to get the other $20,000 if it's going to cost $50,000. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that might write a check, that might say, you know, we like this initiative. Yeah, you know, hey, Klein, they write a check for $5,000. Or, hey, IMS Products, they write a check for $1,000. Or, or Troy Lee Designs, or any of the products that I've talked to in the past that they support various events. You put on an event, you hit them up, they'll give you $2,000, $3,000, $5,000. They will. They absolutely will. And maybe you do it where you say, hey, you know, you give us X amount, say $5,000 top tier, and we'll, we'll have a guy that makes a nice sign, put your sign out metal, out of metal or something, so it's always there, so it's hard to vandalize and what have you, and it's there. And, you know, these trails were sponsored by and supported by these companies and these groups. Here you go. Companies that paid the big bucks, the groups... Maybe the littler companies that tossed in a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there in name form, not logo form, and have that done. I don't know why we can't do that. No one has ever explained that to me. They're just like, oh, we got to get a grant. We got to raise fifty thousand. Then when they don't get the money, they are they're like, well, we didn't get the money. There's no backup plan. There's no backup plan to say, well, let's see if we can raise money through modern technology, which is like GoFundMe or Give Saying Go, whatever you want to use. Or use one of these groups, say, hey, Colorado TPA, you know, you got the system in place. Let's raise money through you for this particular issue. You want to donate to Penrose Commons having single track trails? Here you go. Go there and donate. And we could all, the people that do social media, like myself, um, Highland Cycles, others, we could really go crazy and pimp that out and have people be tossing us some money it might be five bucks here ten bucks there but all you need is a lot of people that's all you need and maybe you get some of the big youtubers on board maybe you get bikes and beards maybe you get him interested and he's, he pimps it out to millions of followers well there you go you probably will raise the money pretty damn easy but, you know, people don't think about modern technology and using it to their advantage. They're just like, oh, well, we need the grant. Can't get the grant. That's the reason why I kind of always hated these other groups that fight for your right, for trails. And I don't really need to name them, but they, they know who I'm talking about. They You, you go there and they're all 60, 70-year-olds and you bring up social media and how to use that. And they're just like, oh, well... Young people aren't the ones donating money. Well, they'll donate something if you market towards them. If you're not marketing towards young people, yeah, they're not going to know about it. They're not going to be able to donate. How many people really know about Colorado Trail Preservation Alliance? How many people know about CMTRA? How many people really know about um, Rocky, Mountain Man <laughs> Rocky Mountain Management Motorcycle Committee? They have to have the longest acronym. Or <laughs> RMM, whatever. You know who I'm talking about, the, the Rampart, oh, Rampart Range Motorcycle Management Committee. That's who it is. <laughs> See, it's hard, it's too long. See, you guys didn't think that through, way too long. But my point is, how many people really know about that? You go up there and you, you say, just randomly ask somebody, I guarantee you they're going to be like, nah, I don't know who that is. I've done that in the past on rides. I've been out there in the mountains and I come across an ATV or I'm like, oh, you know, do you know about, you know, Coveco, and they're just like, I've been coming here 30 years, and blah, 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 yeah, we need to keep these trails open, but when you ask them about Coveco, they're like, ah, I don't know, who's that? Well, you've been coming 20, 30 years here, and you don't know. See, most people aren't going to know. You can't expect them to know, because you're not out there promoting your product, and your product is to bring trail advocacy and trail awareness and this and that they're not going to know about you people know about stay the trail people know about stay the trail because they market it i mean you'll get ads you'll you know you have to be out there pushing your message facebook advertising really does work when we run an ad on facebook for a and moto toys 
wow, you know, we get nonstop traffic to the site. We get people calling. We get people emailing. We get people messaging. It's nonstop. I mean, you toss money out there like 200, 300, 500 bucks for the month, and it's like, yeah, it does good. It, it sells. Advertising works. It gets your message across the right group of people. And with modern technology, you can make sure it gets across the right group of people pretty good versus a, a radio ad. That's just spamming everybody and hoping somebody says, oh, I like that message. I'll give. Or newspaper. Oh, they happen to be reading this newspaper and they happen to see your ad, blah, blah, blah. Or a magazine. Oh, they happen to get this magazine. They see the advert. Oh, okay, I'll join the AMA. I mean, how many? I've never joined an organization based on some advertisement in the magazine. Now, I have given to stuff because of technology going through the computer. Oh, hey, oh, this? Oh, I, I research it. Oh, hey, okay. Because everything's right at my fingertips on a computer. So I want to Google, oh, who's uh, Colorado Trail Preservation Alliance? Okay, I can Google that and see what they have done, see what they are about. I can see their Facebook page. I can see their website. I, then it's more likely that one will give to that organization because I was able to research them right there and then. Um, radio doesn't really work. TV, I mean, how often? I don't watch much of over there TV. I don't even know how much that really works. How about uh, radio? Again, that's that's spamming everybody, like I said, and, and hoping somebody says, yeah, I agree with that. And then they're going to get home and they're going to say, oh, I'm going to research that. By the time they get home, they've forgotten. So use the technology which we have, which is computer and advertising through social media. Use YouTubers to advertise. You want to raise money for Penrose? Use YouTubers. Get them on board so they say, hey, you know what? I like that. Yeah, let's get trails open over here or over there or wherever it might be. And they uh, come on board and they start promoting to their followers and that gets people interested. But no, no, no. These are old men sitting around. These are old men that don't understand technology. They don't understand. I, I just get told and I've gotten told by a very important person that, well, it's only old people that give money and maintain trails. I like the guy. I'm not going to say his name. And he will, he'll never see this because I guarantee he does not watch YouTube videos. He doesn't understand. And that's the problem. You need to get away from this thinking of old people are the only ones that do things. Well, that's the only people that you market to. And that's the only people that might have time and money. Now, if you're trying to get 1500 bucks from a person to go to an event, that's a certain type of person. They, they're older and they have money and time to, to go to the event. Younger people, well, you're going to have to have a cheaper event. That's where Rocky Mountain Adventure Riders, we did cheaper events. You know, we did like 50 bucks, then we raised it to 80, then we did 100, and then we did 150. I think that's the most we've ever charged was like 150. I forget now. But we would have these people of these organizations say, well, you need to charge 1500 bucks. You're doing a lot of work for nothing. Well, these people wouldn't show. We wouldn't have 230 people show up to Silverton, Colorado if they had to pay $1,500 a head. But they were willing to pay $150 a head. So we just raised money for trails from a group of people that probably otherwise wouldn't have given anything because they weren't going to give $1,500. You have to target the right audience. So these organizations really need to look and say, look, the future are the young people. We need to put on events. We need to aim stuff at them. We need to get them involved in the group. How do we do that? You, you got to figure that out. And you know, they don't. So I'm tying this all to Penrose Commons because Penrose Commons, man, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Let's be realistic. If Texas Creek who they had flagged trails, and my understanding was they had started work on single track, and there were some areas they needed maybe to blast or get around because there was a rock outcrop. Where are all these trails, single track trails at Texas Creek? Legal. Legal trails at Texas Creek. What happened? That was like 10 years ago. Where is that? Where are they? It's never going to happen. Because a lot of these land managers 
are environmentalist. Oh, we got to save the planet. We don't really like OHV. Yeah, they'll tell you, yeah, we, we should get some trails. Yeah, you know, they'll give you that talk. But then when it comes down to it, they're like, no, we don't. Really. You know they're back at the office like, how those people fell for that. Yeah, okay. You know, I'll be retired in 10 more years. Okay, you know, they'll still be thinking, oh, we're going to give them this stuff. Now, I'm not saying go out there and just poach the stuff. I do believe in allowing them to initially try, but they're slowly going downhill. Things don't need to take as long as they take. You could have also turned a blind eye. So what happens when you hire a GS, I don't know, what was the guy, GS 13 or something, uh, Leo Ranger to give tickets? Well, that job is forever now. Because that job in the government, they're always going to get money now for that position. So what's he going to do if you make the trails there illegal? He has to justify his pay. you got to remember that. He has to justify his pay. The new vehicle, the ATVs, the motorcycles, the trailers, whatever was provided to him to do his job, now they're going to have that him on the budget every single year. And he's going to uh, need to write tickets to justify doing stuff. He's going to have to give you uh, tickets for a sticker and this and that. I and mean, we all know the sticker's kind of a joke. You buy a bike now, well, you're going to go get a, a sticker from 2023 when in a month you're going to have a new sticker? No. Most rangers are pretty lax on that. Thank goodness the ones I have I know personally but there are those rangers out there that will use it as an excuse to give somebody a ticket. Because, oh, well, you didn't get the sticker. Well, yeah, I just got the bike, and it's, we're talking like a month here. It makes no sense. The sticker program here is kind of stupid, really. Let's go buy when you buy it, then it's good for a year from that date. Utah's like that. Other states are like that. You know, they punch it. It's good till that month. So I buy a sticker now in February. It's good until next February. I buy a sticker in June. It's good until June. The, the reason to do that is because then it's not like, well, it makes no sense. There's two months left. It's kind of winter here. How many times am I going to really ride? Where otherwise people would be like, you know, I'll go buy the sticker because it's good for the whole year. I'll get it out of the way. So, you know, that's kind of a stupid thing with the Colorado stickers. Although the money goes to OHV use, that can't be rated by other groups. However, they do try to rate it from time to time and get shot down. Thank goodness. I guess that is one benefit here. But then again, they could change the stickers. And also, from a merchant standpoint, the stickers are stupid. You make no money. It's zero money made. Because we do stickers here at a and Moto Toys. Now, if we print the green sticker different office by the way whole nother subject on that that's just bureaucracy and how stupid states can be in people when they're coming up with these ideas anyways you can print an ohv sticker on the green tags kind of like a hunting fishing whatever license and then you i guess tape it on because it's not a sticker tape it onto a fork which we did while you we couldn't get the printed stickers a different office handles the other stickers, the printed ones that you stick on your fork, and it's just stupid because so it's twenty five twenty five, right? So you buy the sticker for twenty five twenty five, and there, um, if you use a credit card, well, there's a processing fee, right? For if we use a credit card, so by at the end of the day, it's probably like a penny or two we make. It's ridiculously, you don't make anything. So it's not advantageous for shops to actually have the stickers, but we have various bikes of our own. And plus when we rent bikes and send people out, when they take them out, you know, we want to make sure they have an OHV sticker just in case they're on OHV lands and all our bikes are plated. So they could be on the road. We don't know, but we like to have an OHV sticker. So for us to get the stickers makes sense because we just slap them on the bike, we, we write that cost off at the end of the year for business expense, and it's not a big deal. And so we have them on hand, but it's not a money maker. Somebody like Apex Sports, for example, probably spends like, oh God, they, if I had to guess, 
they might spend $5,000. And once you spend that money for the stickers, you'll get that amount of stickers. So you'll get the stacks of stickers. And what then happens is, say you don't sell all the stickers. Well, you can send them back in, to the state, and the state gets those stickers unused, and they will give you that amount in new stickers, and then plus you'll have to write a check or whatever to give them for the difference, you know? It, it's stupid. So they always have their money. There, There is no way for us to really make money. So you, you buy a sticker, and we basically make we make nothing because everyone uses a credit card. So it is what it is. I guess it brings people in. But, yeah, it, it's another silly thing. It's like, wow, they really need to bump that up to maybe 30 bucks a sticker and let the places that are selling make a little bit of money off the stickers. I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> I mean, we're in this for business, right? Yeah, so anyways, that's another thing. The stickers are kind of silly. I would like to also say, when you're out there at Pinrose Commons, be respectful. Be nice to people. Don't be making dust in the parking lots. Don't be going fast if you see people around. You know, slow down. Take it easy. Be a good steward to those other users of the land. We all like to bitch about the Jeep guys and the rock crawling guys and the side-by-side -side guys. But really, Pinrose Commons is their area. We're just there when you think about it, because there's no single track. We are just kind of there. So, oh, they're going too fast. They're doing it. Yeah, I agree. Some of them race like it's a race course. It's not. They need to slow down. But at the same time, it's kind of their trails. And it's sad that when they initially made this area, they didn't think about other trail users. Why not have a single track trail down the canyon? It's not going to hurt anything. It's boulders. <laughs> it's rock. Um, the few hills they have to get up, yeah, technically, I agree. Some are unsustainable, right, because they might be too straight up. Yeah, so you just need to make it more on an angle, switch back and on an angle. Not a big deal. That could be done. And people, when there's a trail, tend to stay that trail. So the people that ride the single track were staying to the single track. It wasn't like they were just riding along and they were like, Oh, I think I'll go through the bushes over this way and through the cactus over that way. They were like, oh, no, there's single track here. And they would follow the single track. They didn't deviate from the trail. So there's always that misnomer that, hey, riders go out there or even Jeepers and ATVers, and they just go willy-nilly anywhere. For most people, that is not the case. They stay to the path that is there. Most people do that because you don't want to be running over cactus and this and that and get flat tires and what have you. That's just not what you want to do. So, I mean, people stay the trail typically, you know. Even if the trail is illegal, they're staying to the trail that's there. They're not about, oh, I'm going to go go over here now and see what's over there or over there. That's just not what most people do. So that's, that's a falsehood that I don't know why environmentalists, I guess, think that, yeah, we just go willy-nilly everywhere. If you open up that one trail, they're going to branch out. That's not true. That's not true at all. So anyways, I think this video is long enough. That's my rant. My personal take is Penrose Commons will not be open. We'll get a lot of run around. We'll give told this or that. Maybe we'll have an environmental study, an archaeological study done. But at the end of the day, it's going to drag on for a long time. And I don't think at, at the end of the day, they'll ever open anything. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe this won't be like Roland's Pass or something like that that has a law behind it saying you need a route open between the two areas, the wilderness split. But it's not done. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll throw us a bone at Penrose because it is an OHV area. But they don't seem to want to do anything. I mean, I mentioned single track at that meeting with Linda Skinner over 10 years ago. 10 years ago? 12 years ago? Something like that. Down there. And I was told, well, we would have to get bulldozers and studies and this and that. And it's like, why do you, why do you need all this? You don't. And, you know, 
that was over 10 years ago. That single track was mentioned to them. Yeah, and probably even longer. I'm not going to say I'm the first one that mentioned it to them. Or it was probably mentioned to, to them way before that. But they're not going to do anything. They are not going to do anything. I will be totally shocked. And, yeah, but, hey, if you all think they can do something and you're part of one of these groups, let's go ahead and try to raise funds and just preemptively do that. Let's say you we start raising funds and you also get the grant. Let's just write in, in there on the raising of the funds that the funds will go towards improvements of Penrose Commons if if the grant comes through. Because there's a lot of improvements that can be done. The parking lots could be better. The, the road up to that second parking lot could use some gravel and maintenance and just be better. There could be another pit toilet installed up there. There could be barbecue, those ones with the pedestal barbecues you see. Those could be installed with maybe pavilions. Um, maybe we get the, the, the BLM interested in more of a day use fee for that area. That drives away the homeless people. Well, you have to pay your 10 bucks. You have to park in a designated camp site. Maybe make some designated camp sites. You could really improve that area drastically with various things. Have a kid's area for practicing, which they put boulders around and they ruined it. Oh, uh, <laughs> Within a year, that grew back. You know, so it's all weedy in there or whatever you want to call that. The, <laughs> the brush of the desert grew back. But you could see the old circle. They didn't even like go in there and flatten it so you wouldn't see that. <laughs> like you see the circle. Kids rode there, played there. It, it worked great. We need a kid's area. How about some loading docks? So load, unload bikes, ATVs, what have you. Like Peach Valley. I always mention Peach Valley because they're a good example. How about a little enduro cross for riders? That would be awesome. There's a lot of things we could do with the money. If we don't need it for the issues at hand, like the grant, uh, the studies, and what have you. So, let, let's get her done, man. I don't know. Let's talk. Let's let's set up a, a fundraising thing that is designed and drafted with laid out, like, this is what the money will be used for. But if the grants are issued, this is what the money is used for. And, we'll, you know, raise some money. I don't know, man. I'll give some money. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand why we have to wait for grants. I think riders will chip in because they want a winter riding area. I think we'll chip in, I don't know, 300, 500 bucks. Let's get some businesses involved. I think you'd be surprised at how many people would chip in and businesses that would chip in. Dealers that sell the bikes. Especially if you do it right. And they're going to get an acknowledgement because they'll just say, hey, I can write that. I can write that thousand dollars off. That was marketing because you're going to put my name on the sign. Maybe I'm not top tier, but maybe I'm, I'm down here or in name. That would be awesome. I don't know. I think that's what we should do. So anyways, you all take care. Stay well. Stay safe. And for now, obey not going on the single track at Penrose Commons. I'm willing to give them more time. But there's going to be a breaking point, I think, for everybody. Let's be realistic. There probably will be. So it is what it is. Y'all take care. Stay well. Stay safe. And do what you can afford. Have a good one. Bye.